Hey, my name is Matt Giordano, theyogimat.com. Thank you so much for watching and a very special thanks to those of you that are subscribed to me on YouTube and follow me on social media. What I want to share with you today is three ways to get into headstand, Shirshasana 1. There's a beginner way, an intermediate way, and an advanced way. Each approach has its own benefits and its own challenges. Let's get into it. So this first approach involves having a block. This approach is a little bit easier, but it's definitely still challenging regardless of whatever level you are at. I'm going to place the block a few feet back from the top of the mat. I form a triangle at the top of the mat and I place my head down right at the base of my wrist. Place one foot on top of the yoga block and the other knee is going to come into the chest. Then just point the bottom foot to try to move your hips back over your head. Simply release the point, take the pressure off of the neck, and then again point so that the weight goes over your head. And then release and point. Eventually you can start to point enough and start to move your hips back using your buttock strength to bring the other knee into your chest and hold the tuck position. This is where I would stay for most beginner headstanders. And then you take one foot back down and release. The second approach to headstand that I'm going to offer you again is using the block. If you're tighter in the hamstrings, it's easier to get the hips back if your feet are raised up a few inches. So you might make two blocks on top to get your feet a little bit higher if your hamstrings are tighter. If you're more flexible in the hamstrings, you can just omit the blocks altogether. So I'm going to take a block right behind and I'm going to turn it actually wide now so both feet can fit on it. The second approach is a tuck. Same setup, interlace the hands and place the feet on the block once I get my hips up. From this position, I can try to tippy toe off of my feet to bring my knees into a tuck position. I can either stay here or at this approach, I can start to move the knees back and keeping my heels to my butt. I prefer this position to start for an intermediate headstand because you have a little bit more control of your body in this shape. Then I would come down into a tuck position, release the feet probably to the ground, not the block and then sit up. It's important to note that as you're approaching these different variations of headstand, to take enough time sitting up and relaxing afterwards. You don't need to hold the headstand for a lot of time in the beginning. In fact, I would recommend hold it for a shorter period of time at first to let the neck muscles adjust. Also, next week I'll be releasing another video explaining how to take the pressure off of the neck. So let's take it to our third and final approach here. This is the most challenging because both legs go up at the same time without tucking. So both legs are straight on the way up. If you're already balancing a headstand in the middle of the room and you can do it for say 30 to 45 seconds, then maybe now is the time to approach the pike up or the straight leg press up. For this approach, I'm going to demonstrate without a block, but it's still valid to use a block. Start in your headstand prep position with your head on the ground and in your down dog like shape. Then start to point your feet to move the hips back over your head. If you need to, you can tippy toe your feet in or you can simply drag your feet closer by moving your buttocks back. Then from here, firm up your legs and start to move your hips back a little bit more to come up into this L shape. Then start to engage your buttock muscles like you're tucking your tailbone up to the sky to straighten the legs all the way up creating this vertical line. To come down, first hips back as your feet go forward. Keep the legs coming in tight close to your body to keep the weight light. I would love to hear about your experience with these three approaches. Leave a comment below and if you know anybody that can benefit from this video, please share it. And hey, if you're looking for more exercises to help you strengthen your inversion practice, visit theyogimat.com slash handstand. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. Click subscribe, share the video, and I look forward to seeing you next time.